everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back with another scrappy afghan tutorial. You may remember that a little while ago I did a video showing you how to make a one piece, uh, you know, like maybe twin size scrappy afghan. And I mentioned that while I was making it, it was very heavy on my lap and very hot. So it certainly wasn't a good summer project. Then I got the idea of um, doing the same but in blocks. So you will need to go watch that video first because I will not be showing you how to do the crochet, single crochet technique that I made here, but it's the same as in the other afghan. So you'll need to go watch that first and then come back here and I will show you, uh, you know, give you the size of my blocks but I do encourage you to just do your own thing. I will show you how I added the edge and we will also be putting them together. So go watch that video. I'll have a card that will appear somewhere up here that you can click on right now. Go watch it, come back, or the link will also be down below in the description box. I also wanted to mention that at the time that I'm uploading this video, this afghan will be completed and will be on eBay starting at one penny with free shipping, free shipping for the U.S. So do go check that out. I will have a link down below in the description box for you, a link that will take you right to this auction. And please note that I am recording this on October 10, 2018. So if you're watching in the future, that auction is done now. Now that you watched the other video, I want to let you know that this was made the exact same way. I used single crochet and I used double strands. I used various thicknesses of strands of yarn. It doesn't matter what you use. I used still my big crochet hook that is not marked, but I'm guessing that this is either an N or a P or a 10 millimeter ish you're going to use whatever size hook works with the scraps that you have so just make a little practice piece if you like the feel of it the look of it the texture of it then you're good to go if you're using a lot of baby yarn thin yarns you're going to want maybe a smaller hook if you're using really thick and bulky yarns you're going to want a hook even bigger than this one i crocheted um a chain of 25 so my stitches I am working 24 stitches across and I have 26 rows and I will show you a really you know easy way to count your rows uh, the finished size of this one is 15 inches including the border about square 15 inches square ish it does look a little bit uh, taller than wide but I don't know I just measured it and it's coming out to about 15 inches square and it's probably like 13 and a half inches square without the border the one thing that I did differently for this is I used multiple colors on one strand I kept changing colors the other strand I used only white I used different thicknesses of white. I even used off-white, but I didn't want to be changing colors as often. So I would just, you know, do a bunch of rows using white or off-white. Even this one, I think, might be a little bit different. I don't know if the shade is off, but it didn't matter to me. I just wanted white. I wanted, um, you know, just to have a lot of white in it. I just thought I would try that. So you can do that if you want, or you could use like all black with other colors, or you could do it just like the previous afghan that I made and, and switch um, both times. Although you will be doing a lot of not a lot of knotting in this one so you know I thought with using one color as much as I could throughout I wouldn't have to cut and tie as many knots let's talk about knots for a minute when I did the other afghan I got so many comments from people saying oh it would look better if you used magic knot or use the magic knot so you don't have to see all those knots there's nothing wrong with seeing knots. And when people make comments like that, I feel that others are afraid that if their knots are showing, that they're doing something wrong. This is a scrappy afghan. I don't even care if it's not a scrappy afghan. There's no law saying that you can't have visible knots in your work. It's still going to work out as an afghan and keep somebody warm. The knots don't affect that. So don't listen to people 
when they make you feel like you're not doing something the right way, listen to me because I will say always that you're doing it the right way. Your way is the right way. For instance, I'll, there's a knot here, a visible knot. I like that knot. It deserves a place in this scrappy afghan. Honestly, you're going to be making so many knots that if you're stopping to take the time to make magic knots each time, you're going to get really bored with that task really quickly. So you can just do it the way I did it in the previous video. So let me show you some of the yarns that I used. These are the whites that I already showed you. I used other whites also. I don't have them to show you because I really went through a lot of my white scraps and uh, pretty much ran out of most of them. But I also had like a thick uh, crafty white yarn, like something that you would use to make pom-poms. I used that too. It all worked. And then I used just any color. I used the variegated yarns and I used textured yarns throughout. So I just, uh, you know, mixed as I went. One thing I did is if I used a color, just for the heck of it, after I used it, I put it aside over there. So I tried not to repeat the same color in the block. That's just something I felt like doing. And you are welcome to repeat as much as you want. You can do whatever you want. So here's a block that doesn't have the border on it yet. I made 12 blocks like this, and I will be putting those together. You can see that I still have my little ends to trim. Not sure at this angle if you can see that, but they're sticking out. I can see some sticking out there. Again, you could make the decision to leave these little scrappy things sticking out. There's nothing wrong with that. I choose to trim them. I just pull and snip and then they go right back in. They will pop out a little bit after, you know, um, a couple of washings, but then after that, they'll be all set. You do what you want and don't let anyone tell you you can't. I have some strands sticking out on each corner. Oh, before I talk about that, I wanted to let you know that when you are counting rows on this, Two rows makes like a ridge. It's harder to see with the multiple colors, but the, you know, it, when you're holding it and doing it, you can see the ridges. So two rows is a ridge. So I have 26 rows, I believe. I know my angle is probably not the best, but I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. And let me just keep it this way for you. You should end with your chain tail on one corner and this tail, you know, the ending tail is the diagonal corner. That way you know you did an even amount of rows. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start my border all the way around. I'm going to be using my same hook. And I like to, oh yes, first these. This is just like pulled through. It's not that secure of a knot. So I just like to take one strand and pull it through. And then I just tie any old knot. I'm big on square knots. And I'll leave that tail there and I will weave it in as I go. Same on this end. I'll just pull it through, pull one strand through so I can knot the two. Come on, that's not that difficult. Square knot, any knot. That's it. So I like to start in the middle of an edge, not on my top uh, row or the chained, you know, the foundation chain. And I'm going to be doing a slip stitch with white all the way around. I love to start my edges with a slip stitch. Since I was running out of whites that all were the same, I wanted my borders to be all the same, I picked these whites. They're all thin, so instead of two, I picked three. But you can go ahead and do the, the border any way you want, and you can do it with just two strands, as, you know, as if they're the same thickness as what you worked. But I'm working with very fine yarn here, so I decided to go with three. Or if you have some really thick, chunky yarn, you might want to do your edge with just one strand. 
This one has little flecks of color. This one has some glittery threads in it. I don't know if you can see that. And this one has like shiny thread, not so much glittery, but just shiny. And I will be working three at a time. Now, I have 26 rows, so I'm going to create 26 stitches on this side. And then on the, you know, the finished edges, I had uh, 24 stitches, so I'll be doing 24 on those sides. So 26, 24, 26, 24. And again, don't get caught up on making the exact right number because it'll all work out in the end. Let's look at the edge of your block for a moment. This is the chain where we finished our last row. That's always a nice looking and, you know, very easy to see that it's a chain. This is the uh, foundation chain. It's still a chain, but it's just a little tighter than the, the finished edge. And this is the side. Now with single crochet, it's very easy to find your stitches to, um, to work your stitch in. You can see we have something here that I'm going to call the bar. We have another one here. We have another one here. Another one here. So they're pretty easy to see. Between the bars is the bump. And that's also pretty easy to see. And I tend to work right into the top of that bump. It can be a little snug sometimes, but you can do it. So bar, bump bar, bump. Very easy with single crochet. Now I'm going to start in the middle. You can just eyeball the middle if you want or if you want and I'm going to just count my rows. I have 26 so half of that is 13. So I want 13 on this side, 13 on that side. So I'm going to actually start in my 14th row. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, here's 13, 14. So I'm going to be starting in a bump. Don't get all caught up in exactly where you need to start. Just start somewhere. And I'm just going to take my, my yarn and pull through. And again, you will most likely be using two strands. It doesn't have to be three. So I pull through and then I just chain one. Now I'm going to do a slip stitch all the way around. It makes a nice finished edge. Let me show you on the other one. See how it, it gives this line? And if you did it without the slip stitch and just did the single crochets all the way around, it's just a messier look. It's just a different look. You might like it better the other way. Give it a try. You don't have to do this slip stitch row. You can make any border you want, but I'm just showing you that I like this look where it just gives that line below it. And that's what the uh, slip stitch does. So now I just did the bump. I'm doing the bar. I'm just going under and I'm going to pull through and pull through. That's what a slip stitch is. Jeez, I gotta pull through all three. Now I'm going under the bump. Pull through, pull through. Why do I have just two strands? Okay, see, look it, look it, I made a mistake. So let's back up. I make mistakes, I really do. Okay, chain three. I'm going under my bar, pull through, pull through. And if you're using three or even two, make sure you have all your strands on your hook at all times. I'm going under the bump. Go on. Pull through, pull through. Under the bar, pull through, pull through. Under the bump, it can be a little tight. Pull through pull through. No yarning over. Under the, bu the bar, pull through, pull through. So I'm going to do that until I get to the corner and I will show you how I handle the corners. Okay, I'm getting close to the corner. I just did my stitch where I go under the bar. Let me show you. I'll take it out. So I have bar, bump, bar, bar, just going to pull through, bump, going to pull through, bar, going to pull through. 
And then when I get to this funky knot, I'm just going under my foundation chain. I don't mess with this guy here. This is going to be my corner. So I'm going in, I'm going to do a slip stitch, and then to make the corner lay a little bit flatter, I'm going to do a chain, and then I'm going to do another slip stitch in that same stitch. So it's slip, chain, slip, all in that same one. And this counts as number one for going down in that direction, which is my foundation chain. So there's one, two, three, you're still doing your slip. And when you do a slip stitch, you can pull and tug a little bit so it stretches up a little bit, then pull through. It keeps it from getting too tight that way. And you're just going to go all the way across. And at this point, I know I should have 24 stitches because that's what I started with. Well, I started with a chain of 25. I worked 24, so that's what I would have. And I'm just going to go all the way across, and I'll see you at the other corner. I am at the end, and once again, I am going to use that last foundation chain as my corner. So I'm going in, going to pull through. Mine's a little tight because I made that knot, and I can see I did not pull all three. It's really difficult to crochet with, you know, a camera right here in front of my hands. I can barely see what I'm doing. Okay, slip stitch, chain one, and another slip stitch in that very same stitch. Now I'm going to go on the other side, and I'm back to my bars and bumps. With a slip stitch, you can't bury ends so we're just leaving those ends behind until we do the single crochet row and that's how we're going to weave the ends in so just pull them out of your way and i'm going to be starting with let's see where's my bars where's my bumps they look a little bit different on the other side that's right so i want to show you that on this side the bar is toward the back let's see you can see it easier here here's the bar that i'm going to use i could use this guy do I want to use that guy? I can't remember what I used. Here's the bump. Those are pretty easy to see. I think I used the front bar. It's just not as um, noticeable as when we went in the other direction. So I'm going to um, skip this thing because I just did my corner. So I'm starting on a bump. Slip stitch. My bar is in the front. Slip stitch my bump slip stitch you'll start to know what it is that you're working in and it'll look recognizable except I'm completely lost okay here's my bar <laughs> bar and bump I have the textured yarns that also makes it a little bit more difficult to recognize but it's all going to work out in the end. Okay, let me get to the corner. I am coming up to what looks like the corner, and I ignore that big balled up knot thing, and I'm going under my first chain of that finished row. So I did my slip stitch, chain one, slip stitch, all in the same stitch, and that's my corner. And now I'm just going to continue with uh, slip stitch all the way across. Whoops. And I will uh, see you at the next corner. I am getting near the end. And here's my last stitch. So I'm going to do slip stitch, chain, whoop, and a slip stitch. And once again, I am going to just push those ends to the back somewhere. And now I'm going to continue until I get to where I started. And let's see. We'll go to the bar. Slip stitch. And the bump. Slip stitch. Bar. 
bump. And I'll see you when I get to this guy. Right there. Okay, I'm coming up to where I started in the middle of the side of my block. I'm going to work this bar slip stitch. And I already worked that bump, so I'm just going somewhere in here. Like I had done a, a chain one. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Don't get all worked up over it. Stick your hook somewhere in there and go through. Whoops, am I am I caught on something? Okay. Go through and go through and chain one and now we're going to start our single crochets and again don't worry if you don't know exactly where you're supposed to start I'm going to start right here so I'm going to go in pull through and now we're doing a single crochet so we're going to yarn over and pull through go into the next stitch and notice I'm going in just the back pull through yarn over pull through because I want, if I, you know, if I were to go here, I would lose this little line that I like so much. You can do what you want, but I'm just going in the back, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And let me do that until I get to the corner. Just single crochets in each stitch. And now I'm coming up to my corner. And it can be, you know, a little tricky to know exactly where the corner is. You can see here that I have a stitch that's laying flat, another one here, and this guy's kind of up a little bit. That's what I use as my corner. It could be this one, it could be this one. I'm using that guy. So I'm going under, doing a single crochet, another single crochet here, and in this guy I am going to do a single crochet. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to do another single crochet in that same stitch for my corner. Now I'm just going back to a single crochet in every stitch going in the up in the other direction. Okay. So you're just going to do that all the way around and then I'll see you when we get back to where we started. I take that back. I am going to see you right now because I want to show you how to weave in the loose end on the corner that we're coming up to. So I am getting close to my corner. Here's my corner right here. So I'm going in single crochet. Whoops, I lost. I lost a strand. Okay, single crochet, starting over here. Chain one, single crochet in the same stitch. Now, just like when we worked ends in, when you made the afghan, assuming that you watched video one, which you will need to watch, I'm going to do the same here. I uh, see I have a stitch here, so I'm going to go ahead and do a single crochet in that one. And at this point, I'm coming up to my loose ends, and I'm just going to lay them here. I don't care that there's a colored one there. That's okay. It's a scrappy, scrappy afghan. Going under here and under those two um, loose strands, and we're just going to crochet over those. So there's the, my single crochet. So I'm going under my stitch and also under the loose ends and single crochet. So this is going to be captured in our work. Or you are more than welcome to just leave them dangling and weave them in after the fact. I just like to do this. Whoops. I don't think you'll struggle as much as I am because you won't have a camera <laughs> between your face, your eyeballs, and the, uh, the actual work. And I'm just going to do that until I can't do it anymore. And capture those little ends and they're going to pop out and those little ends can be trimmed. Okay. So now I'm going to go around, and then when I get to this other corner, I will do the exact same thing. 
Now I'll meet you at where we started. I am getting close to where we started, so again, I want to show you that it can be difficult to know exactly where you're supposed to stop. And the thing is, is that, you know, you're not always going to know. I don't always know. Thing is, is I stopped caring about that a long time ago. <laughs> if you worry about it, it's going to stop you from making Afghans, you know, in the form of blocks that you put together. So just don't worry about it. I'm going to say here that I have a single crochet there. I have a single crochet there. All right, I was interrupted by the phone, so I have no clue where I left off. But I was telling you, I'm assuming that I see I have a single crochet there, there, and I don't there. So I'm going to put one here, here, and here, and we're going to call it a day. So single crochet here, and I haven't counted at all. I, I just don't concern myself with that. When you put the blocks together, you can make it work if there's, you know, one block that has more stitches than the other. You can just, you know, kind of decrease. And I'll show you that when I start putting them together. And you can just make them fit. And I'm going to do one more single crochet here. Whoops. Three strands is not the easiest to work with. Get there. All right. And then I'm just going to stick my hook somewhere, let's say right here, and I'm just going to do a slip stitch, pull through both, and I'm going to cut. I like to pull through, and then this is just something I do. I like to bring my hook from behind, and I just pull this to the back. And that's about as neat as I'm going to get. And again, this is going to be crocheted to another block. So this little bump here isn't going to show at all. And then I do have this that I can tie. If I tied it right now, and I could have woven this in, forgot about that. If I tie it right now, it, it well, it's not too bad. Okay, I'm going to. You know, if your yarn is too far apart, you don't want just a long strand that like a toe can get caught under, but this is going to be good. So I'm just going to go ahead and make my square knot and like that. And then I will just weave those ends in. It's going to be hard with this big hook, so I need to get a smaller hook. And I'll just, what I do is I, I'll weave this one in this way this one in this way and then you're going to just do this to all your blocks and then I will be back and I will start joining the blocks and we'll do that together too it is another day and I have started joining my blocks first I want to show you what I did and then I will show you how I did it first of all this is going to be the width of my afghan you can see that I have the rows going vertical this is going to be the length of it. So it's going to be three across by four tall, 12 blocks total. And I like to join as I go. Um, I, how do I say that? I like to join my columns first, and then I will come in and join this way. For instance, this is how it would look. I would have my blocks folded down, and I will show you when I do it. And then I start to crochet across to join these two, but then I don't cut because the less ends I have, the better. So I join these two and then I just continue right across and I join these two. I continue right across and I join these two. So let's do that with my other six blocks. Then we will put the whole thing together and then we will start uh, joining in this direction. All right, I start by laying my blocks out for two rows. When we join there, we're actually going to be joining columns. I know it's a little bit confusing, but I have two rows laid out because I want to make sure I have them, you know, vertical or however you want them and that the right sides are up. And this makes it less confusing. I just picked it random. I didn't purposely put these in any, you know, position. It's all scrappy. It's all good. Then what I do is I take this one and I bring it down over here. This is going to be the line I'm crocheting on. Same here. Fold it down. 
That's the line I'm crocheting on. And same here. Just bring it down. So the right sides are facing, just like when we're doing quilting. And I'm going to start crocheting at this corner, across, and then I'm going to continue here, and I'm going to continue here. So I'm going to move these two aside, you know, for now, just so I can have room to put my camera down and show you what I'm doing. And I'm going to take this one here, and I'm going to start here. Here's where I will be joining the two blocks. Now, there's seven million ways to do this, I know, because I counted. <laughs> I actually think there's probably more than 7 million. So whatever you decide to do is totally up to you. I'm going to show you, though, three ways that I generally do this. And I'm going to, for the heck of it, just use a smaller hook for the sake of showing you. If you look at your blocks, you can see your entire V here. And in this block, entire V. So I'm just showing you, like, you know, I'm not starting on a corner just to show you. One choice is you can put your hook under the entire V and under the entire V and you would, you know, yarn over, pull through. And then I just do slip stitches all the way across like that. And then you would go under the entire V and under the entire V, yarn over, whoops, I'm caught get out under the entire V, under the entire V, yarn over, pull through, and then just pull through. Let me do a few stitches, and we'll just turn it and show you what that looks like, in case you'd like to do this. I didn't do this one. All right, let's just, let's just stop there, and that is what it would look like, like this. Now, my lighting is a little funky. Um, it looks like it's yellowed. It's a little bit thicker and bulkier. But this is what it would look like between your blocks. Now, let's do way number two that I sometimes do. You look at your V, and you go on the inside of this one, and the inside of this one. So you're taking the part of the V that's furthest away from you and this side and closest to you on this side. You pull through and you do a slip stitch. The inside of the V and the inside of the V. Pull through, pull through. So let's just do a few of those. The inside of the V where am I? Right there. The inside of that V. Pull through, pull through. The inside of the V. The inside of the V. Pull through, pull through. One more. Inside of the V. Inside of the V. Pull through, pull through. Whoops. Now this, and I'm using a smaller hook. You actually can use the hook you used to crochet with. This gives the same look as the first time, but it's less bulky because you didn't put your hook under so many strands of yarn. But now I'm going to show you the way I did it. And it is my preferred method because I just really like the way it looks and it kind of like gives a border around the blocks. What I do is, if you look at my V, I take the V, the part of the V closest to me on this side, and on the other side, the one furthest away from me. I pull through, whoops, and pull through. Now by doing that, if I capture this end, okay, let me do this this way. If I capture here, I'm leaving that to show on the other side. And same over here. If I capture here, this part will be showing on the other side. So I capture this part of the V and that part of the V. I'm doing like the outer edges. Okay, I'm, I'm frustrated because I have a hook that's too small. But I just thought it would be easier to show. So I look at my V, I want the outside. I look at the V, I want the outside. So there and there. <laughs> I don't know why I don't just switch to my bigger hook. That would make sense, wouldn't it? It would. 
and there, and there. All right, so let's just turn this now and see what we have so far. Now see, here's the connecting part, but see we have this row of stitching here, and I just like the way that looks. So that's the way I did it. All right, so let's just start joining them now, and I'm switching to the hook I used to crochet with. All right, now, did I already get turned around here? Got to make sure I do this the right way. Right sides must be together this way. I don't even know if I had it vertical before, but that's okay because I was just showing you stuff. All right, uh, like this. All right, we're good. So I'm going to start in what looks like the corner to me. And I'm not fussy about this. This looks like the corner. So if this is my corner, I could do, like we said, under the both or in the middle, but I'm doing the outer edge. So I'm putting my hook here. And we're going to call this the corner. And I'm, instead of doing under here, I'm going on this side. Play with all different ways, and you will find a way that you like. It's very hard for me to crochet with a camera between my eyeballs and my handballs. <laughs> all right. And then I just, you know, like chain one to do the slip stitch. Now we're going to keep going. So I, I just look at it this way. I know I want the the um, three strands of yarn, in your case two strands or even maybe one strand, that's just right there at the top because I know that the other strands that I don't want are just falling into the center. So I just go here and then on the other side I just go to the top ones here. Pull through, pull through. And I continue all of the way across. So let me just do that all the way across, and then I'll show you at the end. If you end up with um, not the same amount of stitches, I will show you how to deal with that and to never worry about it. So I'll see you at the end. I take that back. I'm not going to see you at the end. I'm going to see you right here in the middle because you know that I start my um, border on an edge, not on a corner. I like my corners to be easy to work because we always have a knot to deal with when we start and end a border. And I can see my knot is here somewhere, like where I started, and where I ended. I do have a knot back there, so I know that that's where it is. So it's not always that easy to see where you should go. But I have a, you know, a line there that I can go under. Mm, that is like where I joined. I'm not going to bother. I'm going to go here. And I'm not going to care if it screws me up and that I have too many stitches on one side or not enough because we're going to take care of that at the end. So I'm going to just um, deal with this knot. I tried to not make both my knots meet so the knot of this square is on the other end. But again, don't worry about all that stuff. Okay, so I'm going under here, and I've decided to go here. And I'm going to pull through everything. I'm going here, under just three. And I'm skipping that mess because it's not easy to put my hook there. I'm going here. Just pulling through everything. And now I will just continue along my merry way, and I will see you at the corner. Okay, this is exactly what I hoped would happen. I'm coming out uneven, so it's the perfect time for me to show you how to even things up. I'm getting close to my corner. Now, let's see. One, two, three, four. I have four stitches on this side. On this side, I have one, two, three, four, five. That could even be my corner. I'm going to call this my corner. So I need to decrease on this side. First, let me show you if I had to decrease on this side. Let's pretend this side has more. The way you would decrease, decrease on this side is you would put your hook under here, 
and through here just like you were doing a stitch and you would pull through but before pulling through you would go take one more stitch back here and you would pull through all your loops so you used just one stitch on this side but two stitches on this side so that decreased on that side but we want to do the opposite we want to decrease on this side because we have too many on this side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my stitch as usual I'm going to go under and I don't do it like right at the corner I as soon as I can tell I'm off I'll do it somewhere in here so I go under and under and I pull through both but I leave the loops right there and I need to take an extra one on this side so I'm going to go under and that's it I'm not going on the other side and now I'm going to just pull through everything now I have one two three one two three we're good so I'm going to go under under pull through everything and I'll show you on the other side how that won't even show under under pull through everything and we're going in my corner my corner pull through everything now, I seriously do think this is my corner and I seriously don't care I'll catch it on the other way so let's just pull this up a little bit so we can look at what we just did Here it is. Now you can see this is where my funky knot happened um, in the, you know, for when I did the border. But that's okay. Other than that, it looks good. Now here's where our decrease is. So you can see it looks a tiny bit different inside there, but that's okay too. And your blocks are going to just all stretch out to exactly the way they want to be. Now I'm going to just put this back and we're going to attach the next two blocks to here so I'm not cutting anything we're just going to continue so let me grab my other two and I'm going to look for my corner let me get my yarn on this side my corner my corner and then I am going to uh, pull uh, through these two and through here. So it's all joined. Going here, just going to continue now, just like I did. And it's just going to attach them. So here and here and pull through. So I'm just going to go across here. I will join these other two after and then I'll see you at the end I'm excited there's another thing that happened that I want to show you because this happens often okay let's look here I'm getting toward the end uh, this has already worked one two three four five six seven now let's count on this side one two three four five six seven so they're even even number of stitches but look look when I put it together that looks like it's really off does my card filled up so I had to stop abruptly what I was saying is these um, these two pieces have the same number of stitches but they look way off and you might say well geez I can't attach that that's gonna be all fucked up <laughs> it's not I promise you this might have been just a uh, um, crocheted a little tighter or maybe I had thinner yarn whatever we're just going to go ahead and attach that and we're just going to stretch this as we go and that's all going to work it's all going to fall into place and nobody would ever know so I'm just going to finish as normal and uh, I don't do anything differently I don't say well I'm gonna try to tug more and now just crochet along your merry way and no one will ever know that your crocheting wasn't the exact same tension all the way across you can't be worried about shit like that I mean seriously you can't you would never finish any project if you worry that much okay here's my corner 
and my corner oh I do think I only went under two threads here it is a little bit more difficult doing three especially with a camera in the the way like a uh, that and I'm just going to uh, trim oh, I shouldn't say trim but cut yes I used fabric scissors send me to fucking jail and I'm just tightening like this so now let's just go look at that and you're going to see that it's not you know this is not gonna like look puffier just because it's you know wasn't exactly like the other one it's gonna be all good a very a very good so now I am going to put this whole big thing to the other whole big thing I'll show that to you on the bed so you can see what I'm talking about so you can see I have these six connected in this direction like I just showed you and there's my other six also connected in the same direction like I just showed you now I have to connect this whole thing to this whole thing right down there so I'm just going to take that whole piece and fold it over onto this piece and I need two hands to do that so just imagine it. I'm taking that and I'm just putting it and laying it on top of this. I'll show you after. And you can see I just took that whole thing and went plop. And I plopped it down there. And now I'm going to crochet just like we did right across there. I'll be doing that off camera. And then I will show you how we're going to finish the columns and we will be done. This is what we have now. I put that piece and that piece together. And so you can see we have three columns joined. They're joined this way. But now we need to do this connection to join the three columns. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to put this up over onto this. Like that. And then I can start right here. I'm just going to take this over to the couch. I am certainly not going to attempt crocheting all this at the table, but I'm just going to do the same thing that we did for the other connections. I'm going to start here. I'm just going to go all the way across. When I get to this intersection, I'm just going to work the stitch on either, whoops, I'm just going to work the stitch on either side. So I'll do a stitch here and a stitch there and you just uh, can go right past that. So I won't be showing you that because it's too cumbersome to bring to the table. So just trust me, crochet across, get up close to that connection, and then just go and continue right there, and it'll look perfect. You can always stop and look at it. If you don't like the way it looks, do it a different way. And when it's all done, I will measure, and I will show you pictures on the bed, and we will be done, and it will be on eBay. So. Remember, if you're watching this in October of 2018, then uh, the eBay auction might be on. It's only going to run a week. I don't know exactly what day this is coming out, but the day this video comes out, the auction will be up for a week. It's going to start at one penny with free shipping for USA, free shipping for USA outside of the country. Has to pay shipping through eBay's global shipping program. And... Um, if you're watching in the future, that auction is over. So I'll be right back with the finished product. I'm going to do there, and then I'm going to connect that, and that's it. I am done, and I love it. I'm going to talk about a few things. First of all, I'm not going to put any additional border around it. You could. I'm not for the sake of time, and I just, I'm anxious to move on to something new. Without a border, you can see it almost gives it like a scalloped edge, but you could certainly do a border all the way around. You could do a scrappy border. You could, you know, mix colors and then maybe finish off with white around that. It would be really cool. The other thing is, if you wanted this to absolutely fit the top of a twin size bed with a little bit of overhang, you could do one, two, three, four, five, five rows, and that would be good enough for a twin. There is enough overhang on both sides, so maybe just uh, three additional blocks is all you would need. What else did I want to mention? Oh, I have to go get the measuring tape and measure this for you.
I just measured and it came out to about 42 wide by 65 long I believe I just measured and I already don't remember pretty sure that's what it was or actually maybe even a little bit longer and I don't know what else to tell you about it let me just show you close up how that looks between the blocks I just really like it and I like that the blocks are going um, you know that I turned them because this is the way you know we worked the block this way but I made that be the length and I just like that vertical look very much I love that I used white for one strand throughout and again I used various shades of white and I only changed the white maybe two or three times in each block but I did try to use a variety of different whites in each block but the colors I changed probably every uh, every other row sometimes even every row like you know sometimes I might just do a little bit of a color I'm trying to see examples here it's too hard to even to even know but um, you can see here like I changed to red and went this way and this way and then I changed to this color then I changed to this color so it's like I did a lot of changing and that's why you want to make knots that are quick and easy so again do go watch the first video do go check this out on eBay if you're at all interested in placing a bid on it thank you so much for watching and I will be back with more soon bye